readers. This is our third time reading through our read aloud, turning it into our old favorite storybooks, because as you know, we just are reading machines when it comes to these books and can look at the pictures and match the exact beginning sounds to the words that we know in our head. We have all these skills we've been using in Reader's Workshop, and we can transfer that over to our read aloud. So today we're working on two things. I want you to really pay attention to how the characters are feeling this time. And we are also going to try to act out how they are feeling more today. Because um, I can make those connections when I read through. When I act, when I make that face of how they're feeling, it helps me to remember how the story goes. And it'll help me go back and reread more. So let's get started. This is The Biggest Pumpkin Ever by Stephen Kroll and illustrated by Jenny Bassett. I just noticed he's pointing at something. I didn't see this before. Do you think he's pointing to the pumpkin? Do you think he's noticing from way up there and that's how the story gets started? Hmm. I wonder if that's what's happening. Once there were two mice who fell in love with the same pumpkin. I like how they started with the word once there too. It's kind of like one of those fairy tale once upon a time or one time. It's a good intro to a story. Clayton the house mouse noticed it one day in the vegetable garden. It was still little and green, but Clayton thought he could make it grow really big. It might even be big enough to win the grand prize at the town pumpkin contest. Desmond the field mouse discovered the pumpkin the same day. He thought that if he helped it to grow, it would become the biggest jack-o'-lantern in the neighborhood. That afternoon, Clayton watered the pumpkin. He also mixed up some fertilizer of manure in water and he spread the mixture around the pumpkin to make it grow larger. That very same night, Desmond went into the garden. He watered the pumpkin too. He also spread some manure mixed with water around it. The next day, Clayton watered and fertilized the pumpkin again. That night, Desmond did the same and the pumpkin began to grow. By the end of the month, the pumpkin was so large, Clayton couldn't believe his eyes. He's even doing a little like dance for joy. You can see his foot's off the ground too. He's like, Good job acting like the characters. So let's do different voices here because we know this is um, Desmond, or I'm sorry, Clayton and his mom. So his mom talks first. So she says, my goodness, said Clayton's mother. It's not even full grown. Clayton shrugged. All I do is water it, he said. Clayton's mother whispered in his ear. If you want the pumpkin to grow bigger, faster, she said. You should use sugar water. At night, Desmond brought his brother Morris to see the pumpkin. Morris knew everything there was to know about growing, growing things. At some pumpkin, he said. Desmond shrugged. All I ever do is water it, he said. Morris whispered in his ear. You should try using sugar water, he said. The next day, Clayton dug a small hole beside the pumpkin. In the hole, he placed a bowl of sugar water. He cut the vine in a few inches from the pumpkin. In the cut, he put one end of the candle wick and he put the other end of the candle wick in the sugar water. That night on the other side of the pumpkin, Desmond did exactly the same thing. Within a week, the pumpkin was twice the size it had been. Within two weeks, it was absolutely enormous. Can you guys do that with me? Because when I think of enormous, I think of huge or so big, so grand, so do. Within two weeks, it was absolutely enormous. Good. So big, we can see it's taller than him already. 
Clayton was amazed. He ran down the road and peeked into his friend Jimmy's pumpkin patch. So I see him over the fence. I think we can do that. Pretend to put your paws because you're a mouse up on the fence and peek over. The pumpkin Jimmy was growing for the contest looked much smaller. Clayton scratched his head. I have an amazing pumpkin, he said out loud. And I think I'm going to win the contest. That night. Desmond and his brother Morris spent a long time looking at the pumpkin. <coughs> Excuse me. How do you think it got that big? Desmond asked. Morris shrugged. A little luck and a little skill. It's going to make some jack-o'-lantern, said Desmond. It sure is, said Morris. A week later, Clayton noticed the pumpkin was bigger than the family car. During the day, everyone who knew came to admire it. And at night, the field mouse gathered around to do the same thing. By now, summer was almost over. In a week, the pumpkin would be full grown and start turning yellowish. Then, orange, of course. A few weeks after that, it would be ripe and ready for the pumpkin contest. Clayton could hardly wait. The pumpkin was growing so fast, it would soon be larger than his house. Then he had a terrible thought. If the pumpkin was so big, how would he get it to the contest? It wouldn't fill his red wagon. It wouldn't even fit in his truck. Clayton decided to worry about this when the time came. That night, the weather grew colder. Thinking there might be an early frost, Clayton rushed out to the pumpkin with his blanket. So he threw the blanket on top of the pumpkin. You guys throw a blanket up on top. One was not enough. Soon he was rushing back and forth, carrying all the blankets from the house. He was throwing them on the blanket to cover and protect it. As he worked, he hummed a little song. <laughs> As he hummed, he heard someone else singing. He also began to realize that someone else was covering the pumpkin with blankets. Desmond too had seen the danger of an early frost. He too had brought blankets from for the pumpkin. As he worked, he sang a little song. Doo -doo -doo -doo, I love my pumpkin, Doo -doo -doo -doo, my jack-o'-lantern. As he sang, he began to realize that someone else was working and humming. Clayton stopped humming. He put down his pile of blankets and peered around the corner of the pumpkin. Esmond stopped singing. He put down his blankets and he peered around the side of the pumpkin. The two of them bumped heads and fell down. You've been feeding the pumpkin, said Clayton. You've been feeding the pumpkin, said Desmond. That's why it got so big, said Clayton. That's why it got so big, said Desmond. They burst out laughing. When everything had been explained, Clayton said, I know I'll win the contest if I can get the pumpkin to town. Desmond smiled. I'll help you. Just let me carve the pumpkin into a jack-o'-lantern for Halloween when the contest is over. It's a deal, said Clayton. A deal, said Desmond, and they shook on it. The morning of the contest was bright and sunny. Mice were bringing their pumpkins to the town square by truck and car and wagon. Some were rolling them along the ground. Carry my pumpkin. Someone's carrying it on their head. Think you could balance a pumpkin? Suddenly, they all stopped short. Over the fields came the biggest pumpkin anyone had ever seen. It was being pulled by a hundred field mice on motorcycles. Oh, I didn't notice. There's two riding on. <gasps> Look who it is. Who do you think that is riding on top? Desmond and Clayton, they are brave. When the pumpkin reached town, it was too big for any of the streets. Clayton had explained why they couldn't bring it to the square. The mayor understood at once. He led the crowd to the giant pumpkin and pinned the first prize ribbon on its side. Then everyone danced around it. Who would believe this, said Clayton as he danced. Who would believe this, said Desmond at the same moment. When the celebration was over, the hundred field mice pulled the pumpkin back to the field. The day before Halloween, they carved it they carved into the best jack-o'-lantern ever. And on Halloween night, its wonderful smiling face could be seen glowing for miles around.
E N. Alrighty, let's work on retelling this story today. Also, I, when this video is over, I want you to think about an answer to your buddy, which is your stuffed animal or a parent or your teacher. Um, who are the characters in this story? So who are the main characters? And what is the setting of our story? So where does this story take place? Where were they? Great work. See you tomorrow.